What's up YouTube? My name is Kenneth. Today I get to share with you guys a really cool puzzle. So here it is. It's the 17 by 17 over the top cube by Oscar Van Daventer and was printed from Shapeways and assembled and stickered by Takafumi Hisada and it was purchased by Aaron McDonald and he was kind enough to send it to me so that I can show it to you guys, share it with you and show you what's so cool about this. So I really wanna thank Aaron for sending it to me so that we can see it together. So anyway, this is the 17 by 17 world record largest N by N by N cube ever uh, invented. And so um, it was invented by Oscar Van Daventer and a lot of you have probably seen his videos on this puzzle. Um, but anyway, I'm excited to share it with you guys. So in this video, I'm going to show you kind of how the, you know how the puzzle turns. Talk about the turning a little bit. Then I'm going to talk about how many different positions you can twist a 17 by 17 cube into, and that's just mind-boggling. It's just so fun to think about. And then uh, after that, I'll just tell you guys my plans for this puzzle and maybe some future videos I might make with it. So anyway, let's get started. So I wanted to show you guys the turning of the puzzle and. Uh, you probably are expecting me to tell you how poorly it turns and that it, it's so hard to turn. Uh, the turning quality is bad. That's what you're expecting me to say. But I have to tell you, yes, it is hard to turn, but the actual turning of the puzzle is actually a lot better than you might expect. It actually turns pretty well. Uh, and so once you you know turn one layer, one layer turns pretty well. What's hard is actually aligning the puzzle so that you can only turn one layer. And the reason it's so hard to align is it's just so big. I can't get my hands around it. Uh, like an 8x8, eight eight, here's an 8x8. Eight eight. I can easily grip an 8x8. Eight eight. And so aligning an 8x8 eight eight isn't that difficult because I can keep it aligned the whole time. A 17x17, 17 17, though, on the other hand, it's hard to turn because you just you can't grip the puzzle. And so it's hard to just isolate a single layer, but once you do, it actually turns a lot better than you might think. And so uh, I'm actually quite impressed with it. Uh, the reason it turns so well is this one was actually broken in by Aaron. He actually solved this thing. And so as he was solving it, he was breaking it in. And so what would happen for him as he solved it, uh, it would get looser and looser and looser until it was so loose it getting close to fall apart. He would then have to tighten the puzzle, tension it, and that would happen uh, multiple times as he played with it. And uh, so he, that's how he was able to make this puzzle turn so well. So he's actually just solved the puzzle. Uh, and that's all it took to make it turn this well. So um, anyway, that's pretty cool. He told me it took him 10 hours to solve the puzzle over 12 days. Uh, and uh, that's actually pretty good, I think. Um, you know, I don't know how long it would take me. Um, but I got to say, man, I'm so tempted. Uh, to scramble this thing and, and give it a try. Uh, man, I think that'd be a lot of fun. I wonder how long it would take me. Um, I it, Unfortunately, though, it would take so long uh, and I just really ha don't have much time to, to be able to set aside for it, but I'm so tempted I might do it. Uh, I think it'd be a lot of fun. So one thing that's interesting about the turning is the puzzle just literally does not pop. Pieces do not fly out of this puzzle. And that's a really good thing. For piece, for puzzles like uh, the 8x8 mass-produced puzzles, these kind of pieces here are very small and they can, they can literally fly out of the puzzle. But with the 17x17, 17 17, that doesn't happen. And that's a good thing. Can you imagine this piece popping? pieces going out all over the place and you know 1500 pieces crumbling in your hands uh, how devastating that would be uh, but that doesn't happen with this and it's probably the design uh, Oscar designed it with I think he called them floating anchors I, I forget exactly and so these pieces actually uh, are really long and they go deep into the puzzle and they keep it they end up making it pretty stable and what happens is the pieces don't pop but what they do do is they kind of twist in place. So I really want to do a checkerboard pattern for you guys and I also wanted to talk about the number of positions on a 17 by 17 and I've actually tried to do that now a couple times but I'm really bad at twisting and talking at the same time. So I, I've done a couple takes and failed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to twist this into a checkerboard pattern and then I'm going to go back and do a voiceover talking about the positions of a 17 by 17. So let's get started. So, how many positions in a 17 by 17? Well, let me read the word, the actual number. You know what, I like to do this. I've done it for the three by three and seven by seven. So there's 
For the 3x3, three three, there's 43 quintillion positions. For the 7x7, seven seven, there's 19 duo quintillion positions. And for the 17x17, seventeen seventeen, there's 66 quintillion reconillion positions. And I practiced saying that number. It was really it took me a lot of tries to say that. Uh, but that's what you would say call this number if you are in the U.S. Uh, in Europe, you would call it something different. And I haven't practiced this one as much. But you would say if you're in Europe that this number is 66. Quinqua Septuagintac and Tilliard. Wow, I, I didn't do that one very well. Uh, but I didn't practice that one either. So, uh, yeah, so there's uh, that's a big number, right? But that number doesn't really give you a good idea of, of the size of the number, right? So let me just tell you in scientific notation. Uh, in scientific notation, the number is 6.6 .6 times 10 to the 1054. And that is a huge number. It's so big. It is unimaginably big. I can't come up with a way to consider how big this number is. And I've been trying really hard. Um, and, you know, I'd like to do that. For the 7x7, seven seven, um, you know, I, I compared positions of a 7x7 seven seven to atoms of the universe. And that wasn't big enough. And, right, and so I had to uh, come up with, you know, for every atom in this observable universe, there's another observable universe, another universe full of that many atoms, and all those atoms combined would be the number of positions of a 7x7, seven seven, right? And that's so unimaginable already. But at least it was a, a pretty equal comparison. Um, so that was good. So I'm trying to do that for the 17x17, 17 17, and I can't. It's impossible. If you think of the smallest thing ever, right, a Planck volume, uh, it's super tiny, it's already unimaginably small. Uh, there's something like a Google Planck volumes in a square inch. So how many Planck volumes are there in the observable universe? Well, the number is huge. In fact, you could fit every single position of a seven by seven in, a, you know, if you could shrink a seven by seven to the size of a Planck volume, you could get enough seven by sevens to cover every single position of a seven by seven in the observable universe, and you'd have room to spare. But if you tried to do that with a 17 by 17, you would fail. You wouldn't even get close. It wouldn't even scratch the surface to the number of positions there are on a 17 by 17. So there's something like 10 to the power of 185 uh, Planck volumes in the observable universe. So it's a, it's a hard comparison to make. I'm trying to come up with a good one. So if you guys can come up with a good one, uh, that would be great. Let me know. Leave a comment or send me an email. Um, I really want to make a video kind of comparing this number, this number 10 to the power of 1054, to make it make sense. Uh, because I think that's a lot of fun. It's fun to think of stuff like that. And I'd like to make a video on that if I can come up with a good comparison. So if you guys can help me out, that'd be great. The best I can come up with so far has to do with monkeys and keyboards. Um, <laughs> so uh, anyway, I think it's fun uh, to think of big numbers like this. And I hope you guys do too. So that's pretty much it for now. Thanks guys for watching this video. I hope to come out with more videos on the 17 by 17. So stick around for those. Thanks guys for watching and of course, have a great day.